Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Sex Marks the Spot. Today, I'm super excited to welcome Brian Pierre Grassi to the show, and we're going to be exploring modern masculinities as well as femininities as, and how it relates to our sexuality, relationships, and our authentic selves. I'm Dr. Catalina Lawson, a licensed clinical psychologist, and I love talking about sex. Sex Marks the Spot is a podcast that bridges the gap between what we know and what we actually do when it comes to sex, relationships, and health. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm delighted to introduce my guest, Brian Pierre Grassi. I've known Brian for a few decades now, as he's the brother of one of my close grad school friends, and I've truly enjoyed and am impressed by Brian's journey and his work. Brian is a coach, mentor, author, podcaster, workshop facilitator, and father who has transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people around the world over the past 12 years. After being debilitated with a decade of chronic illness, Brian committed himself to the inquiry of the root cause of human suffering and the core principles of vitality, achievement, and fulfillment. Through 11 years of his own serious inquiry, led by many of the world's mentors from all disciplines, he transferred his learnings and experience towards supporting others in so many ways, it's a long list, so be patient. <laughs> Brian has written two books, The Wow of Now and The Big Glow. He provides individual, couple, and group support to individuals on every continent via coaching, workshops, retreats, lectures, shows, festivals. He founded the Big Glow community on Facebook with over 10,000 members, and his message cuts across several social media communities. Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really excited to be here and explore modern masculinity with you as, as it relates to sexuality. I'm excited to be here too and uh, grateful as well. Yeah, cool. Well, so let's start off the conversation just by exploring this construct of masculinity and modern masculinities. You know, traditional masculinity is a social construct that frames social um, beliefs, behaviors, and attitudes, and really embraces traits of stoicism, power, aggression. Again, that's a very simplified global view of what traditional masculinity has been defined. And while ma masculinity exists in a socio-cultural context, it's often associated with gender roles where men are meant to maintain this masculine ideal. However, recently, over the, you know, there's been definitely a movement in lots of researchers as well as the American Psychological Association who are really beginning to challenge this construct and expand on it so that it is really rather than masculinity, it's masculinities and this expansive construct of that really promotes a more holistic and fluid definition of modern masculinities that's flexible to really provide options of how masculinities can be expressed or experienced. So like even this subtle difference between saying sub masculinity versus masculinities is really just one of those ways of actually reframing a little bit. So I'm kind of, that's a little bit of the world that I've been exploring more on the researchy side. And so I'm super excited to delve into your side, which is definitely very holistic. So can you start us off by you telling me a little bit of providing your perception of the construct of masculinities and through the lens of your experience and work? Well, I um, actually, I haven't really felt into the masculinities before. Actually, I really like that. Because um, it, it's because it's accurate, um, and you know, I I don't think that you can delve into masculinity without delving into femininity, right? Because like without one, there's not the other. So there's like this interplay of the two. I think we should also clarify, which I think you sort of already did, but just to make it even more clear, when we talk about masculine and feminine, we're not ne not necessarily talking about men and women. So there's like. <laughs> A man can be masculine or feminine. A woman can be feminine or masculine. Most women are feminine. Some are masculine. Most men are masculine. Some are feminine. Um, and that's all great. And I think that's what's happening is we're just kind of, to me, it's all about, you know, when you talk about my work, what is my work about? It's about 
um, tapping into the authenticity of who we are, you know, and, and, re- and, and, and from that, through being present, through getting a deeper level of self-awareness, recognizing and realizing who we really are and accessing that and expressing in the world, that's where we're at our fullest, most, most whole, uh, most optimized, actualized potential. Mm-hmm. So um, as opposed to trying to fit into a box, you know, I, I have to try to, I have to try to be this thing because that's what I'm supposed to be. That's the conditioning I'm supposed to be. So I think the bottom line thing right now, which is good, is that there's the exploration of this and the liberation of people people realizing that um, they don't necessarily have to fit into a, a one size fits all box, and they can mm-hmm. and they can explore who they really are and and really, like I said, be in the fullest potential of that and expression of that in the world. So I like. I like the the, the, the masculinities and the femininities um, because there are different uh, aspects and archetypes of, of, of masculinity. So I appreciate that, that distinction. Yeah. You know, I've definitely appreciated it too and realized how, how much when I talk about this with clients, my, mm-hmm. the vernacular has evolved and and how by modeling that also and just introducing these concepts mm-hmm. of, of within mm-hmm. an individual because certainly mm-hmm. I completely agree this whole idea of of or the construct of masculinities definitely exists within what mm-hmm. we also the construct of femininities and it really is this, this spectrum that yeah. Um, and I do think that, you know, in psychology, they call it this gender role conflict. And uh-huh. that's the factor that actually is le- leads to a lot of internal distress. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think that there's a lot of pressure around that, you know, mm-hmm. across all sexual orientations and across all identities, as far mm-hmm. as what is that for someone? And so it mm-hmm. sounds like for you, it really is speaking, you're encouraging people to just actually identify different traits within themselves mm-hmm. that it's just authentic and mm-hmm. rather than labeling masculine feminine as binary you know actually just mm-hmm. kind of like emotions i'm not sad i'm not happy i'm mm-hmm. there's like all these emotions but when it comes to these types of things we so very much have been educated and socialized to just be one or the other yeah i think it's it's being authentic to to who you are I, I personally do enjoy the play of masculine and feminine. And I think that's a beautiful part of being alive and part of being a human being. And, but, you know, who we really are is, is deep, you know, if you get into a spiritual level, it's deeper than that, right? But then it expresses itself in the world um, as yin or yang, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's, that's the play of creation. That's the play of form. And that's, that's the beauty and um, joy, which would include sometimes pain and sadness and happiness and laughter and the, the whole range. Mm. <laughs> That's the whole realm of human relationships comes from that play of yin and yang, you know? So Absolutely. I think it's embracing that. When it comes to that internal struggle between, between that yin and yang, mm-hmm. can you tell us how you've witnessed that? Or can you tell us another story of maybe even recently of where you've experienced that as far as how, an individual has experienced that that tension and has had difficulty finding their authenticity and how yeah. it's actually translated in particularly regarding their their sexual identity and their selves well it seems like i find i don't know if it's it seems to me like it's it's even more of a challenge now I, maybe it's not but it seems to me like it is like people seem to have a hard time of really appreciating both polarities you know mm-hmm. both the masculine and both the feminine so if they're someone who is a feminine essence, they have trouble appreciating the masculine. Someone who's a masculine essence, they have trouble appreciating the feminine. Um, um, but I think that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the work, that's the journey, is be able to appreciate both polar- polarities, on, you know, not necessarily understand them, but appreciate, honor, mm-hmm. you know? And um, you know, when you have that yin, yin, yang symbol, the yin always has a little bit of yang in it, and the yang always has a little bit of yin in it, mm-hmm. you know? So there, 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 there's always both aspects in ourselves, even if one is predominant in a certain moment or predominant, you know, in us, you know, majority of our lives, we have both energies. And um, there's something about, you know, I find that you can't really truly appreciate the feminine 
really truly without appreciating mm-hmm. the masculine and vice versa. You can't really truly appreciate the masculine without appreciating the feminine because you recognize the one through the other. And that's, and again, that's what like brings us together in, in, in relationship. You know, I think whether it's um, heterosexual or homosexual couples, there, there's always the play of masculine and feminine that's 100%. happening, you know, yeah, to be honored and, and recognized and appreciated. Well, and oftentimes, you know, so much of, of how this actually gets externalized mm-hmm. comes in the way we communicate and the way we express ourselves and the way we initiate or, mm-hmm. or, or receive and we give and receive and all of that. When, so when it comes into relationships, that's where that internal struggle like externalizes because then mm-hmm. it becomes that push and pull then ends up seem ha- just basically imposing itself on the relationship too. And we often find partners or engage in relationships for different reasons. And we have to figure out how does ours, how does our identity actually fit with theirs? I mean, and so yeah. one of the things I think that a lot of people have a hard time um, kind of grasping, and this is where, again, I, I feel like you're so vivid is actually seeing what does, when we talk about this masculine and masculine and feminine, what is mm-hmm. the process that you take people through to begin to identify those aspects of themselves and not again, taking them away from not categorizing necessarily and embracing them, but mm-hmm. just beginning to recognize them because oftentimes one, this is a, it's a, it's a foreign vernacular for a lot of people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's a lot. I mean, the, the, I, I would say the, the feminine is the, the receptive energy and the masculine is the directive energy. Although, as you said, there's different masculines, different femininities, so it's not quite so, so simple. Like, you, you know, teasing that out is really interesting because I think the masculine, there's a directive energy, but there's also this energy of the masculine of holding space, right? Which is not directive energy. Mm. And, some, and, and they can be used different ways at different times. Um, but you can also think of the feminine as like the flow and masculine is more gazed around organization and structure. And again, like it's just when you start to recognize these things and you start to go into it, it's like, oh, they're actually both important. You know, yeah. they both have value. And actually one isn't that great without the other. <laughs> One's kind of like not working without the other. So, and that's why, you know, we, we find this, with, we access it in ourselves, but also we're, we're drawn into relationships of, you know, romantic relationships or even friendships or whatever the variety, because people have qualities that we don't have as strongly in ourselves, you know? And so we value them because they're bringing something into our lives that um, brings balance Mm. to ourselves. Well, and I'm sure you've experienced or witnessed at least when people feel that imbalance with themselves, even when that balance is uh, the opportunity for balance is there in Mm -hmm. relationship. Mm Mm-hmm we find it's hard sometimes to, to we, sometimes there's just blocks between yeah. that, that disconnects. Yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit within your lens? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's important to make a distinction here between a codependent relationship and an interdependent relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying someone brings you balance, but it doesn't mean like, Oh, I'm empty and I'm, I've, I'm a lack and there's nothing inside me and I need you to fill it. It's, it's not that it's like, I'm a, I'm a whole person in myself and you're a whole person in yourself. And, me being a whole person, you being a whole person, I recognize that you have real gifts and qualities that I don't have as strongly, you know? So mm-hmm. let's, let's work together. Let's play together <laughs> yeah. as, the case, as the case may be. And, uh, and then, there's, then we're stronger, we're even stronger as two whole parts coming together. So I think that's, a, that's an important, you know, distinction to make. No, 100%. I feel like one of the biggest challenges is, is actually heightening people's awarenesses to a lot of these things. And when you're mm-hmm. talking about those things, it seems like when people are going to find you, they're already on some kind of path. Um, yeah. And their lens is already at least open, mm-hmm. at least open to one, this vernacular, or this paradigm. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm also sure you've encountered people who really this is foreign and where they are so disconnected with themselves. Um, yeah. and, and you've even experienced that physical pain of how our bodies mm-hmm. break down from it. Yeah. You know? um, can you speak a bit of where even the, where the first steps might be for somebody or even from your own experience of, 
of actually just beginning, you know, even, mm -hmm. even getting somebody to begin to read now with so there's so much mm -hmm. out there, but to begin that journey to actually that journey to awareness, that journey to that balance, mm -hmm. to embrace that. Yeah. You know, if you think of, um, you know, our language we're using is English, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think of Spanish or Italian, for example, they have masculine feminine inherent in the language. I know. Right? Yep. And I, I think Spanish, that that's, yep. really, that's really, that's really um, valuable. This, because to me, the masculine feminine, like, like going into that and starting to understand that is, is so huge because it's like, you start to see how everything's operating. You start to see how everything's working. You start to, in the world of duality, the world of form, how everything, masculine feminine is what is the seat of creation. Mm. Right? So when, the, when the masculine and feminine come together, babies are born. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, um, but you can even just see this, like just in nature, you know, like an ex simple exercise would be like, look at a, look at a, um, whatever you're looking at, you know, something in nature, a tree, a flower, a bird, a, you know, is it masculine or is it feminine? You don't have to be right or wrong. It doesn't have to be like, oh, you get it wrong, you know, but it, it starts to get you working at how the yin and yang is playing, but you know, playing with each, how those two, um, energies are playing together all the time. Mm. And, you know, and you can just kind of see how when they're in harmony, there's just this flow of creation that's happening. And then you can, then you can go to human beings. Like, is this person in a feminine energy right now or a masculine energy? Right. It's not so simple. You'll see, you'll see oftentimes um, women that are in a masculine energy, men that are in a feminine energy. And, you know, I, I read, I, some of the old books like uh, John Gray, Men Are From Women, Men, Women Are From, mm. Mars, Venus, Venus sorry, yeah. better yeah. from Mars. Uh -huh. um, David Data, this this kind of stuff I I, I delved into, and it really um, and more. But it just gives you some things people would know. It really helps to like understand if you can understand where someone's if they're in a feminine energy, you're gonna speak to them or approach them in a different way than you do if they're in a masculine energy. So to kind of really detect, okay, what energy are they in right now? What energy am I in right now? Right, and then then you can kind of get a feel of what their needs and their wants are mm -hmm. right in, in, in that space and how you, how you, so I think it's just really valuable to kind of get to, to really know how to navigate human relationships and human psychology and um, emotions and, you know, all the things that we, we deal with interactions with, with each other. And, and of course, within ourselves as well. No, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Well, and I feel like I loved your, I loved your, your reference of, of birds and, and beginning to actually, and this is why I really enjoy your walks, um, is, is that I do feel like they're outside of ourselves, outside of humans. You know, we are so accustomed to just thinking about these relationships, but this is every, everything. When you're talking about this masculine and feminine energy, this yes. is everywhere. And, right. and quite honestly, it's a little bit less complicated and dramatic um, <laughs> when you look in nature and that interplay and actually use that as, as, as just to observe and see what uh, those processes are, you know, uh, and, and it's also less threatening, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that I do think that that's, I mean, cause in, in your book, um, in your latest book, you were saying how this is really good to maybe read every now and then, maybe out in nature, it's always the best. And, and I know you do so many retreats in such beautiful locations. And how do you feel sometimes also the environment of actually of where we are physically actually a lot fosters us to heighten our awareness of, of yeah. ourselves and connect to that? I love this question. So... I would say that's a great, that's another great thing. What, feel where you are. Is it masculine or is it feminine? Right. So I would say one of the most masculine places that I've been is New York city. So it's, so everything's gridded and straight and all the, everything's orderly and organized. And uh -huh. first, first Avenue, second Avenue, third Avenue, even the colors are like this dark gray and dark blue and, um, obviously the energy of, of, of the people and this, 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 um, you know, the whole thing is just this, this very masculine energy. Now, interestingly enough, many of the women that I know who are very feminine love New York city. Mm -hmm. So I love, I love, I love it. <laughs> so, so it, it doesn't, 
pe- so people might think, oh, because it's masculine only. No, because we like the polarity. Mm-hmm. So you could be in a very feminine energy and that you feel like that masculine energy is like kind of supporting you or kind of like, you know, almost like moving you, you know, it's almost like a, a dance partner for you, mm. you know, where, um, so it's, it's, it's not, so it's interesting. And then somewhere like, um, I would say like, um, parts of Hawaii are very feminine, you know, lots of flowers and, um, flow and, um, openness and a lot of heart. Um, and uh, so anyway, the point is that, you, you, yes, you can totally feel where you are if it's feminine or if it's masculine. And then you can feel within yourself what you need, right? Mm. You may need something that's really feminine and nurturing. Um, and then you can go to the, a place that supports you in that way. Or you may need something that's really um, masculine and, you know, pushing and, you know, making things happen and uh, find something that supports you in that way. Mm-hmm. No, that's, it's interesting. I mean, and I think, again, this speaks to, one, allowing yourself to, to be present enough that you can actually notice yourself yes. and actually transport yes. yourself. You know, so yeah. much, we become so transient and, and travel has become so much mm-hmm. more accessible. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting because, you know, you and I started doing these things doing all of that kind of stuff a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And we are a little bit of a different generation as well with this, Mm -hmm. you know, and when we were doing this, I feel like we were kind of, we would often be solo. And and now you can do this and whether it be in Manhattan versus in Hawaii, and you're going to find like-minded. You're going to find people on similar paths that actually then contribute to that environment, you know? Um, But I do think that so much of that is actually being aware of of in the present to actually begin to just tap in to that to that space and even acknowledge though even acknowledge what that energy is around you of the buildings and of the waterfalls and things like that you know and really bringing that in. Um, But it does seem like that different people are going to resonate with different things. Um, and, and I do think that again, with the, looking at the environment and how that resonates and how that connects, it also really can, when there is that disconnect, you know, I do think that that's hard because then when we think of that, so much of suffering or struggle can be when people don't have those, those other options, you know? And so it mm-hmm. all has to be in here. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I guess a little bit of there when we're feeling that in that imbalance, because you do need both for harmony. What do you do? What is the pathway for people who just feel stuck and, and can't, and the heart, their harmony isn't there and they can't feed off. They don't have the support. They're alone mm-hmm. and they don't, they're also in an environment that maybe is toxic in relation to them. Mm hmm. I think what's what's is a real positive right now and is exciting. I think there's a lot of challenging things about the time we live in, but you're totally right. Like we're not things are not people are not as isolated as they used to be when we were, you know, in our early twenties. Um, <laughs> now you can just Google. I can Google all kinds of crazy stuff and find information on stuff. And oh, this person's thinking about the same thing I'm thinking about. They have a question about what I'm questioning about. You know, mm-hmm. um, so that's the good news. Is like. You, know, you can reach out, even if you're in a place where the people around you aren't asking the kind of questions you are exploring. You can find a podcast like this, you know, and like tune in to like these kind of questions and find people that are like asking things that maybe you haven't felt, um, have the courage to like have the conversations with people around you, but you can tune in and start to open up in these ways. So I think that's a really great thing that, that we have, you know, most people have access to the internet these days and they can, they can start to explore their consciousness through the internet. And then the other thing that, that stuck out to me, what you said was like, yeah, being present is such a foundation of, I found for everything, you know, yeah. like if you're not present, then you're not in the game. <laughs> so nope. it's like, yeah. you gotta, you gotta start, you gotta be present. And when you start to, when you start to be present in the moment, then you become aware of um, what is alive for you, what's true for you, what's authentic for you in the moment. And it's changing, right? So that, it's in the moment itself. Um, and then you can feel into um, what, what you're being called to. So um, you could be called to, I just needed to get, take a walk in the forest right now. 
you know, which, and, and maybe that's like a, a kind of a nurturing feminine environment um, for you, or you may need something that's more on the, the masculine side, like I mentioned, like, you know, or an urban area and something that has the energy of, of that. Um, so, but when, but it only happens when you're present, you can kind of tune into what, what's, what am I being called to, or what kind of, um, support am I being called to bring in, uh, right now and, and, and following that guidance within yourself, following that movement, that truth within yourself moment by moment. Mm. No, 100%. Well, I know so many of your workshops lately have been focusing on breath work. And, and that is kind of like your first tool, almost, to begin to access. And I do, I think that, you know, when people have now heard mindfulness has become so much more popular and accessible and, um, and cutting across different, different traditions. Um, is it with is it through breath work that you actually begin to particularly for those patient for clients who are so um, so disconnected and so not present and yeah. so locked in? Yes, yeah, that's a good point. So um, for a while, I was just not just, but a lot of what I was doing was was sharing with words and t- talking and you know sharing ideas and pointing people to things. Um, and then we there's been there's definitely a lot of um, tools that we bring into an experiential level of meditation and mindfulness exercises and mindfulness walks and ecstatic dance sometimes and different different exercises to engage and connect yoga um but i really found that this breath work is just such a great um tool experientially to bring people into everything that we're pointing at and talking about that just really been uh my partner annie and i have just been been sharing this these workshops and just the response I'm getting from people is so powerful and the, and the transformational power of it and the way it opens people and the, the healings on different levels that happen that, yeah, I've just been really excited about uh, just sharing that with people. Yeah, no. Well, and I know that Annie has, she's done a lot of work in Kundalini, you know, and I yes. think as far as the traditions, Kundalini is very heavy on the breath work, breath work mm-hmm. um, and circular mm-hmm. breathing and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so it sounds like you're doing that a lot in your workshops and, mm-hmm. and even in your retreats. Is that always yeah. a component? It seems like it is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a component. Yeah. It's kind of like the, the center, the center of if we're doing it. I do um, personal sessions with people as well. And, you know, I do different, I have my own podcast and I have a podcast coming out called what is Tantra, which I'm excited to share oh, cool. with people. And, um, but uh, but as far as like in person stuff, yeah, breathwork is definitely a center a center piece of, of what we're sharing, and just just because it's been so powerful, you know. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, well, that's exciting. I definitely um, I need to join one of your Wednesday sessions, um, <laughs> and because um, I saw something on your Facebook about your you have Wednesday um, like online yeah. sessions for everybody. Yeah, um, that's true. But I didn't know if you were doing breathwork in there because I definitely. Um, I've definitely always included that in my clinical work, but then even in my own personal practice, it's interesting how much you really have to be intentional, you know, (laughs) you really, and it is very much a practice, you know, of, because our bodies just want to irregulate. They want to, they want to just get into that mode um, because it's just trying to, trying to survive. You know, and yeah. so, and, and so actually regulating and, and beginning to con- gain, not just access, but control and potentiating that control. Um, yeah. I want to add one thing to that, by the way, since this, since this podcast is called Sex Marks the Spot, right? Uh-huh. So breath is, is such a critical element of bringing that into um, sensuality and sexuality and it just... You know, that's so much of the essence of what Tantra is about is getting connected to your breath and um, presence and breathing consciously and being present with yourself and being present with um, your partner. And so, um, so anyway, the point is it, it'll open up those, those areas for your realms of you too in ways that, you know, um, are new frontiers for people that delve into the breath work and breath, breathing meditations in this realm. Unfortunately, our chat actually got a bit interrupted, um, but I'm certainly going to hopefully catch up with Brian another time. And um, we're going to explore a little bit more about 
these this yin yang modern masculinity and and also delve a little bit more into tantra so um so stay tuned and i will follow you guys up then cheers the content on this show is meant to be relatable educational empowering and hopefully a little funny it's not meant to be treatment and some of the things we talk about may seem more easier said than done. So if you're feeling stuck or alone or distressed, reach out for support from therapists, physicians, or other licensed healthcare providers. Thanks for listening and tune in each hump day for some juice to fuel your sexy day. Cheers.